So I recently upgraded my solar from um, four 100 watt panels to two 375 watt panels and um, it has made a huge difference in my uh, solar charging. Um, my 400 watt panels, my four 100 watt panels at most delivered about 250 watts of, of energy. Solar panels are all rated for, you know, best possible conditions, laboratory conditions, and you don't often exactly get what they are rated for. Um, my, my two 375 watt panels, um, so that's about 750 watts, um, I have been getting uh, around uh, 600 watts out of those panels. Um, which is excellent. I mean, that's a huge step up from the 200, 250 watts I was getting out of the old panels. And, um, you know, 600 watts really lets you charge back your power wall really quickly. Even though this is 15 kilowatts, you know, a good day of sunlight with a couple decent sized panels can really recharge a power wall. But this video is less about the power wall and more about encouraging people to play with solar. Solar really is pretty cool. Um, if you ever um, buy any, any um, if you're ever messing with batteries and you're trying to recharge, you'll, you'll figure, quickly figure out that, you know, charging batteries with anything more than 100 or 200 watt power brick is actually pretty difficult. Most power bricks that you get to charge batteries are less than 100 watts. And when you start charging really large batteries like this, it actually becomes quite difficult to charge them. Um, you know, even when you've got a nice big ISDT, um, you know, like my T8 charger, the mo that thing's max rated for 500 watts. So even if I had a great power supply and I hooked it up to my ISDT, the most I can charge with is 500 watts. Um, and, and so, you know, two panels, I'm already pro producing more than that. The, 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 those two panels routinely, you know, hit 600 watts right there. Um, so, so solar really, with a couple decent panels, can be very efficient at charging, even more so than, than just an outlet. Um, so if you play with batteries, if you have a power wall, if you do any battery related stuff, um, look into solar. And, and part of this video is just going to talk about, you know, what it takes to run solar and what you need and the basics. And I want to keep this very simple. I'm talking about people who are on a budget who only want one or two panels who are just doing hobby level stuff with solar. That is what I want to focus on because, you know, I, I went for a long time without any solar and, and I added solar and I, I, you know, solar really has added that extra dimension to, to my hobby work. And I want to encourage people to, to explore solar because it's not expensive and it, it's pretty cool what solar can do. So let me show you around what I had, what my current setup is and, and what it takes. So these are the four 100 watt new power solar panels that I had on my house before. Um, I've taken them down and replaced them with some new panels, which I'll show you in a second. They were fine, um, but I never quite got the 400 watts out of these. The most I've ever seen out of them is about 250 watts. Now part of that might be the way I wired them. I actually had to put all of these in series for a total voltage of around 70 to 80 volts. And the reason I had to do that is my 30, my solar charge controller wants one and a half to two times the battery voltage um, from the solar panels. So that, I've got a 29 volt battery, which means I needed at least sort of 45 to 50 volts as open circuit voltage from the solar panels. And these are 20 volt panels. So I needed at least two to three of these in series in order to get the voltage needed by the solar charge controller and so I ended up just putting all four in series and the, it worked fine and the solar charge controller took it but um, you know when you put things in series they're a bit more um, 
they're a bit more susceptible to shading and if one panel is not performing it kind of messes up all of the panels so um, I would have preferred to put them in parallel but um, I didn't and so uh, uh, anyways they served their purpose for a while and now it's time to move on to some new panels so here is the back of my yard you can see the my two panels that I have those are both 375 watt panels and they're just mounted on the back of my house in my yard um, and why I'm showing you this is you don't need to put them on your roof you don't need to find a fancy way of of hanging panels if you're just doing it as a hobby those just have three like door hinges pop riveted onto the frame and they are hung on a wooden frame that I screwed into my siding and um, the panels have two prop arms it allows them to collapse if I need to uh, bring them down if a hurricane is coming and I don't want them hanging out I can just lower them down and they can fold flush against the uh, against the um, side of my house um, and then um, you know but if you have a shed a carport a pergola like I do those are all great places to put a couple panels and and uh, then you have access to some real energy that is very useful when messing with batteries so as I said I have these panels hanging on the back of my house and they are facing south because I am in the uh, northern hemisphere and you in the north you want your panels to face south and in the south you want your panels to face north um, I have them just screwed with door hinges onto a wooden frame that I mounted on the siding of my house and they they swing up and down kind of like kind of like a door I have a couple prop arms which holds them up at an angle that you know is conducive to to you know solar charging and um, this is how I chose to mount them because as I said I'm in Houston and Houston gets a lot of hurricanes and I want to be able to swing them down and probably put a ratchet strap around them to hold them down when a hurricane comes through so that's why I chose to put them on hinges and swing them up and swing them down but you can mount them however works best for you and whatever you have available in your yard whether you put them on a shared roof if you put them on a pergola if you hang them on a fence anywhere that's sort of out of the way um, and facing sort of the right direction will work for you um, I you know I I don't want you to think you have to you know lay them on the ground or or, or have them sort of be an eyesore I think there are ways to put a couple panels out of the way where they look good and and still function um, um, well so you know have a look around your yard and mentally make a decision as to where you think you can get away with a couple panels so once they are hung you're gonna need to run the wire into your garage or your shed wherever you want the solar you can see I have some this is a 12 gauge oxygen free copper um, outdoor landscape wiring running from the panels and heading down and it's it's actually buried and runs back towards my garage and comes in at my um, where my sprinklers come into my garage there's there's there was already a junction box there and I bring the solar into the garage at that point um, outdoor wiring is um, burial rated and um, this this low voltage outdoor wiring is relatively inexpensive and hardy and is outdoor rated so I highly recommend it if you're you know just doing some DIY solar so there is my incoming solar it is uh, going to my make sky blue solar charge controller um, the charge controllers job is to sort of normalize the incoming voltage your solar panel voltage will constantly go up and down as the clouds move through the sky um, and the voltage will fluctuate quite a lot constantly and the solar charge controller sort of normalizes the the incoming voltage and puts out a consistent voltage for your batteries so this is a 29.4 uh, volt uh, lithium-ion power wall 
and that ch solar charge controller right there is programmed to put out 29.2 volts to charge up this power wall and that's what it does um, uh, now the trick with this solar charge controller is that this is a buck solar charge controller meaning it wants a higher voltage from the solar and it steps the voltage down to a lower voltage for the battery so it's always trying to reduce the incoming solar voltage to the battery voltage which means you need higher solar voltage than your battery so my new panels each produce 48 volts each panel which means I actually put those two panels in parallel because just the voltage of one panel is enough for me to charge my batteries so the 48 volts of one panel is plenty so I put those two in parallel and I have an incoming 48 volt supply my old panels they only produced 20 volts each panel so I actually put all four panels in series so that I would get close to 80 volts incoming which the solar charge controller then um, reduces down to the 29 volts that I need for the batteries so when you use sort of a buck solar charge controller you always want a higher solar voltage than your battery voltage um, and you know you just program in whatever battery voltage you want right on the panel and it will handle charging and always reducing the voltage down to what you need they do make boost solar charge controllers um, in one of my previous videos I showed the little green um, 7210A solar charge controller it is a boost solar charge controller and that's if you have maybe just one panel producing sort of 18 volts and you need to charge a 24 volt battery that will boost the solar it'll take the the 18 volts and boost it up to 24 volts 29 volts whatever you need um, but those are more rare a boost solar charge controller is a lot more rare most solar charge controllers take a higher incoming voltage and reduce it down to the battery voltage that you need so you will need to buy the right kind of solar charge controller for your application um, but I do kind of recommend you sort of install at least two panels so that if you series them up you sort of get at least sort of 40 volts even if they're two small panels they should have a 20 volt per panel rating and if you get two in series at least you get 40 volts 40 volts you can then bring down to 24 volts 12 volts you know technically you could even almost make it work on a 36 volt battery but at least then you have a range of options that you can bring that voltage down to and charge multiple different sort of batteries um, if you're one panel through a boost converter can work but it's a bit awkward because if you have one panel and it's producing 20 volts you can't now charge a 12 volt battery because your incoming solar is already higher than the than the battery and if you have a boost solar charge controller it's trying to take that voltage even higher and so now you kind of can't work with 12 volt batteries so I kind of think the having a higher voltage on the solar panels and stepping it down to your battery voltage makes a little more sense now the thing about solar is realistically you are going to need some sort of battery um, paired up with the with the solar um, almost all solar charge controllers require a battery to be attached um, uh, and you kind of need the battery to fill in um, again solar tends to vary a lot as it's coming in so um, you are going to need the solar to, uh, the battery to sort of fill in the highs and lows as the solar goes up and down the battery will fill in the highs and lows for whatever your use case is but most people will then you know put the solar into a solar charge controller and from the solar charge controller into a battery and the battery will be hooked up to an inverter um, then you know when you're working on your projects you have you know two ways to use that, that the solar on my workbench here I have this lead which hooks back to my power wall and this is 29 volts available on tap um, which is great I can plug that into my SDT or I can you know or if I'm working on a 7S battery I can use this for charging here is 29 volts available on tap if I'm working on other voltages um, rather than reprogramming my solar charge controller and hooking up different batteries um, I use I just run it through my inverter step it up 
and then you plug in whatever power brick you need for your outdoor voltages. This is a 48 volt power brick for my 48 volt e-bike. This is a 36 volt power brick for my 36 volt e-bike. So, you know, it's a, it is a little in, inefficient stepping the voltage up to 110 and then stepping it back down to 48 or 36, but it's simple. You know, you run the energy through the inverter, bring it out at 110 and then you can plug in whatever you need for whatever voltage. Um, so that is the simple way to do it. But again, when you're, you know, when you're a hobbyist on your workbench having, you know, 110 solar and direct battery access um, is a great thing and, and it allows you to really, uh, you know, be versatile in what you do and how you use the solar. And um, there's something quite uh, gratifying in, you know, charging batteries and charging e-bikes and that directly from the solar. And even though I don't need the solar, it's, it, you know, and I, obviously I have power right there. Um, it is, you know, sort of, sort of gratifying to, to sort of know that, you know, that energy came out of nowhere. And uh, now, and now you're using it on your projects.